Welcome to Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to calculate the general equations describing the shear and the moment of this beam. The first set, we're going to do it from 0 to 6 meters, then from 6 meters to 9 meters, and from 9 meters to 16 meters. So we're going to arbitrarily say a distance x from 0 to 6 meters, then from 6 to 9, and so forth, because it does change when we have different kinds of loads. We have distributed loads and we have point loads like that. All right, let's do the first section. We're going to arbitrarily say what is the general equation between six, 0 and 6 meters for the shear force and for the moment. First of all, to get the shear force, we have to sum up all the forces in the y direction. We do have the reaction force at A, which is a positive 1970 newtons. And then we have a, a distributive load force pushing back. And that depends upon how far we are. So that's going to be a minus 200 newtons per meter times x meters. And then we have to add to that the shear force, which is going to be downward force, that's minus v sub c. All that adds up to zero, which means that the shear force v sub c is equal to 1970 newtons minus, because we move the v sub c over to the other side, and then minus 200 newtons per meter times x meters. x will be in meters, and that will be the general equation for the shear force between 0 and 6 meters. Now we're going to find the moment between 0 and 6 meters. So we sum up all the moments about point C, and point C would be that point right there. What we're going to do here is uh, say, that, well, they add up to 0. The first moment is going to be caused by the reaction force, which is a negative moment because it's in a clockwise direction, minus 1970 newtons multiplied times the distance x from there to there. To that we have to add the distributive force load, so that would be a positive uh, moment because it acts in a counterclockwise direction. That would be 200 newtons per meter times the total distance, that would be the total force, that would be times x, and then multiply times the moment arm from where the distributive load acts, which is at the halfway point, and so we take half that distance times x divided by 2. And then we have to add to that the moment at C, that would be a positive moment because it acts in a clockwise direction, and all that adds up to zero. So to find the moment, we then move everything else over to the other side, we turn the equation around, so the moment at C is equal to, this becomes positive, 1970 newtons times the distance x meters, and this becomes negative, minus 200 newtons per meter times x squared, that would be x squared divided by 2. Remember that x is in meters, so it would be meters squared divided by meters, so you have newton meters as a unit, and this works out just fine. Okay, now we work on the second section. Now we want to know the shear and the moment between 6 meters and 9 meters. So we have to include all of the distributed load, but none of the point loads. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals to 0. So we have the reaction force at A, that would be positive 1970 newtons, and then we have to subtract from that the load, which is 200 newtons per meter times 6 meters, so that's 200 newtons per meter times 6 meters, and then we have to add the shear force, which is a negative V sub D. And so the general equation for V sub D is equal to that would become a negative, negative 1970 newtons, uh, plus, when we move, well, no, I'll take that back. It's not a negative. I moved the V sub D over, that became positive. This stays where it is. It's a positive 1970, and then a minus 1,200 newtons per meter times 6 meters. So that's 1,200 newtons. And actually, that V sub D is equal to 770 newtons. Notice that it's not dependent upon x at all. It's the same shear force anywhere from 6 to 9 meters. No dependency on x. And then we will want to find the sum of the moments about d. That is equal to the moment caused by F sub A, which is minus 1970 newtons, times the distance. Well, that would be 
Hmm, let's see here. Well, it would be x, whatever the distance is, so it would be from, from 6 to 9 meters, we call that x, because it'll be the total distance from here to there, so we call that distance x right here. And then we have the distributor load, that would be uh, plus the total force, which is 1,200 newtons. It's 6 meters times 200 newtons per meter, so a total of 1,200 newtons. And it would act as if it acts at the center point, so that would be at the 3 meter point. So it acts at 3 meters, so we want x minus 3 meters gives us this distance. So this would be x minus 3 meters. And then we have to add the moment, that would be plus the moment at D. Solving for that, we get, oh, and that, that equals zero, doesn't it? So solving for that, we keep that on that side, we move everything else over to the other side, we get the moment at D is equal to, that becomes a positive, we move it across, 1970 newtons times x, And that would be plus 1,200. Oh, no, that becomes a minus because we're going to move it to the other side, equal sign. So that becomes a minus 1,200 newtons times x. And that we have a positive 3,600 newton meters. So notice that would be, if we simplify that, that will give us 3,600 newton meters. And this minus this gives us plus 770 newtons times x. So that would be the moment at D as a function of x. So let me put parentheses around here so we can see that this is multiplied times x like that. Okay, finally we're going to find the generalized equation for the third section. Again, we're going to sum up all the forces in the y direction, which are equal to zero. We have the 1970 newtons from the reaction force at A minus the 1200 newtons total force of the distributed load and then minus a thousand newtons of this load force right there and we get this minus this that will give us minus 230 newtons so again there's no dependency on x it simply will be 230 newtons from from this point out past the 1,000 Newton force to the next force right here, not including the 2,000 Newton load force. Next, we're going to find the moment. So the sum of the moments about point E equals zero. And we have the first moment caused by the reaction force at A, which is a minus 1,970 Newtons times the distance from there to there, which would be X. Notice it's negative because it gives us a clockwise a moment. <clears throat> then we have the plus 1200 newtons times the moment arm. The, uh, the, the force will average, will act as if it's at the average distance of 3 meters, so we take x minus 3 meters, x minus 3 meters, and then we have to include this force right here, which is uh, plus 1000 newtons times x so x would be here, minus 9 meters, x minus 9 meters, and then we have to add the plus m sub e, I'm running out of room here, uh, so plus m sub e, and all that should add up to zero. Solving for the moment at e, the moment at e, that is equal to, I'm moving, I leave that on that side, move everything else to the other side, that becomes a positive, 1970 Newton times x plus, no, that becomes a minus 1200 newtons times x, and that becomes a minus 1000 newtons times x. And then what I have left, I have 1200 times a negative 3 and 1000 times a negative 9. So that gives me a negative 3600 and a negative 9000, that's negative 12600. But when I move the other side, it becomes plus plus 12,600 newton meters. So that's, that should be an M meters. So it should be 9,000 plus 3,600. That's correct. So combining all that, I get the moment at E is equal to a positive 12,600 newton meters. And that this minus this, that would be 2,200, that would be minus 230 newtons 
times x, x of course being in meters, and that would be the moment at E as a generalized equation representing the distance from 9 meters to 16 meters on the beam. And that's how we find the general equation. Notice if we now want to find the shear or the moment at any point in time, we simply find the correct section, we find the correct equations, plug in a value for x, and you'll have that particular value for the shear and the moment. And that's how it's done.